Uh, in the last lecture, we had uh, initiated discussion about correlations for heat and mass transfer and I was going through some general considerations okay, for how these heat and mass transfer correlations depend upon the flow conditions and the surface conditions. Flow conditions, two regimes, laminar and turbulent flow. Okay. Laminar flow is generally observed in uh, pipes for Reynolds number less than about 2100 at which there is a uh, discontinuous transition to a turbulent flow. In the flow past particles, there is a gradual change in the flow pattern. The flow is actually laminar only for very low Reynolds numbers, less than about 1.5 or so. After that, there is a series of transition uh, of changes in the flow pattern that take place. Okay. Uh, and the surface conditions that we were considering were two that was based upon the either the no slip condition at a solid liquid interface or solid gas interface, slip condition at a liquid gas interface on the liquid side. Okay. You have a slip condition, the velocity at the surface is non-zero. Okay. In both cases, the velocity perpendicular to the surface relative to the particle has to be zero because the surface is not penetrable. The velocity parallel to the surface in the case of a solid has once again got to be zero relative to the solid surface okay, because you have a no slip condition at the surface. So, if you are in, in a reference frame moving or rotating with the solid, the velocity has to be 0 at the surface. Uh, in, uh, whereas, if you have a liquid gas interface, the velocity perpendicular to the surface has to be 0 in a reference frame moving with the interface. The velocity parallel to the surface does not have to be 0. Instead, there is a shear st zero shear stress condition applied on the surface. So, I had considered first the limit of low Peclet number. In this case, velocity is no longer a parameter, which means that the Peclet number is not a parameter, Reynolds number is not a parameter. Therefore, the Sherwood and Nusselt numbers have to be constants in the limit where the Peclet number is small. Okay. Both the Reynolds number and the Sherwood number have to be constant values. You will recall when we did momentum transport, we found that the friction factor in the drag coefficient had to be proportional to 1 over the Reynolds number. That is because in that case, the friction factor and the drag coefficient were scaled by the inertial uh, stress scales. In this case, they are scaled by viscous and therefore, in the absence of convection, the dimensionless fluxes scaled by the viscous or the, the diffusive scales has to be a constant and I told you that is constant is equal to 2 for uh, flow through a, a flow around a spherical particle. It could change as the shape of the particle changes. Similarly, um, we were considering, uh, uh, I had I told you that this uh, low Peclet number regime is not of relevance for flow in a pipe because the time of diffusion okay, just from dimensional analysis depends only upon the length scale and the thermal diffusivity and it is proportional to d square by alpha. Okay. The fluid displacement within that time is very small. So, the, uh, the diffusion process equalizes the temperature across the cross section before the fluid has moved very far in the limit of the low Peclet number limit. Therefore, this is not usually of relevance for the flow in a pipe. We are looking at high Peclet number and low Reynolds number. Okay. Uh, Peclet number is large, convection is large compared to thermal diffusion or mass diffusion. Reynolds number is small, convection is small compared to momentum diffusion. This can be realized only if momentum diffusion is much greater than mass diffusion or momentum diffusion is much greater than thermal diffusion. Okay. This happens as I said for liquid flows. For gas flows typically as we will see later, thermal diffusion, mass diffusion and momentum diffusion are all of the equal magnitude. Okay. So, this regime does not exist for uh, gas flows. In this case, low Reynolds number, the flow is linear that is that for the flow through a pipe for example, 
if I change the average velocity by a factor of 2, the velocity at every point in the cross section also changes by that same factor. So, the shape of the velocity profile remains the same, the magnitude of the average velocity changes and so if I divide the local velocity by the average or the maximum velocity, I will get a universal curve okay, for all flows independent of the average velocity. Same thing happens for flow around a particle. In the laminar regime at low Reynolds number, the velocity at each point in the flow field is a linear function of the free stream velocity that is the velocity difference between the particle and the fluid. So, if I change the velocity, the free stream velocity by a factor of 2, the velocity at every point changes by a factor of 2. The velocity profile does not change or the velocity pattern does not change. Therefore, all of the information regarding convection is contained in the characteristic velocity itself and therefore, the Nusselt number and Sherwood number are only functions of the Peclé number. Okay. The Nusselt number and Sherwood number are only functions of the Peclé number. Okay. And you can make a further uh, simplification. Okay, you can actually show, though I will not show it over here. Okay, uh, we will see it uh, later. Okay, for rigid surfaces, okay, for Peclet number much greater than one, and Nusselt number, uh, sorry, and laminar. which means that Reynolds number is much less than 1 for a particle, okay. so uh, small Reynolds number. Okay. Okay. You can show that for no slip condition at the surface, okay. recall that no slip condition is where the velocity increases, the tangential velocity is 0 at the surface. Okay. If the tangential velocity at the surface is equal to 0, the tangential velocity close to the surface will increase linearly as the, with the distance from the surface. In that case, you can show that the Nusselt number and the Sherwood number are both proportional to the Peclet number power one third. Okay. For low Peclet number, laminar flow and for no slip condition at a surface. Okay. On the other hand, if I have a slip condition, a non-zero velocity at the surface as in the flow past a gas bubble for example. If I have a slip condition or a mobile surface, okay, you can show that the Nusselt number and the Sherwood number are proportional to Peclet number per half. Okay. Okay. You, can, you can show both of these in the limit of high Peclet number and laminar flow which is low Reynolds number for the flow around a particle and uh, Reynolds number less than about 2100 for the flow in a pipe. Okay. Of course, for the flow in a pipe, it will also depend upon the dimensions. We saw that the factor d by l is also important for the flow in a pipe. Okay. So, this is okay, for high Peclet number laminar flow. Okay, where uh, mass convection or thermal convection is large compared to thermal diffusion, but momentum diffusion is large compared to momentum convection. Okay. And then you have of course, the other case that is uh, for uh, high Peclet number, high Reynolds number. for high Peclet number and high Reynolds number. <coughs> In this case, the Nusselt number and the Sherwood number are functions of the Reynolds number and the Peclet number. Okay. And in a pipe, of course, it will depend upon the length to diameter ratio as well. Okay. Because here, the flow pattern changes. Okay, As we saw, the pipe flow it becomes turbulent and it has uh, the turbulent flow has a smaller curvature at the center more plug like and a steeper slope at the walls. Okay. So, because of that the Nusselt number and Sherwood number do depend upon Reynolds number and the Peclet number. 
Okay. So, let us look at some specific correlations okay. <coughs> pipe flow. Okay. There are two specific uh, configure, uh, types of flow that is laminar and turbulent flow. For a laminar flow, the Nusselt number or the Sherwood number, the correlation that is usually used is 1.86 Peclet number per one third okay, into d by l per one third. Okay. This is for a pipe. Okay. Laminar flow and therefore, a parabolic velocity profile diameter d Average velocity is okay. V average, okay. length L and diameter D, okay. where the Nusselt number is equal to Q average by K delta T by D. Nusselt number is defined with respect to the diameter of the pipe that is the characteristic distance in this case and the Peclet number is equal to V average times D by alpha. Okay. So, those are the definitions of the Peclet number and the Nusselt number. Okay. Uh, there are two things that I would note one is that this is applicable only for um, Reynolds number less than about 2100 where the flow is laminar okay. and the other important consideration is that this is valid only for d by l much less than okay, Peclet number inverse. Okay. I told you that in this case we have the, the low Peclet number regime is not of important I am sorry it should not be this this is less than okay, Peclet number. Okay. Uh, this is for high Peclet number okay so this is valid only for high Peclet number high Peclet number laminar flow okay this is valid only when d by l is less than the Peclet number itself okay and the reason for that we will see later okay so uh, i'm sorry l by yeah no Peclet number is large and the ratio of L by D has to be less than the Peclet number. Okay. So, there is a limit on the length of the pipe for which you can use this correlation. You can see here that this correlation depends only upon the Peclet number. I told you that um, in the high Peclet number and low Reynolds number or the laminar flow regime in this particular case the flow pattern does not change. So, all the information regarding convection is in the characteristic velocity which is the average velocity for the pipe in this case. Okay. So, therefore, it depends only on Peclet number and it is p power one third okay. and the reason is because there is a no slip condition at the wall of the pipe okay. and then it goes as d by l power one third as well. Okay. That means that the Nusselt number or the Sherwood number decreases. Okay as the uh, diameter to length as the length becomes larger and d by l increases. Okay. This correlation is valid both for Nusselt number and Sherwood number. In cases of heat transfer where is there is a significant variation in temperature across the pipe. Okay. In the case of heat transfer where there is a significant variation of temperature across the pipe. Uh, we had uh, the, the temperature the, the, the viscosity of the fluid changes with temperature okay. the viscosity of the fluid changes with temperature. If you have heat transfer from the wall of the pipe at a higher temperature and the fluid uh, uh, in the pipe the bulk fluid having a lower temperature then there is a variation in viscosity across okay. and that variation in viscosity is taken into account by an additional factor here. E 
power 1 third d by l power 1 third mu by mu w power 0.14. These terms here, okay, up to within a constant factor, can be derived, okay, and uh, whereas this term here is an empirical function, empirical function, which is determined from experiments, okay. It's not, uh, 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 it cannot be derived from first principles, but up to this dependence, you can actually derive it from first principles. Okay. This is for a laminar flow at high Peclet number, okay. For turbulent flow. Okay. The Nusselt number is equal to 0 0.5 okay. R e power 0 0.8 okay. P r power 1 third. Alternatively, if I were to write this in terms of the Peclet number, okay, we know that R e times P r is the Peclet number. So, uh, I would write this as 0 0.023 okay, times R e power 0 0.47 P e power 1 third. Okay, because P e power 1 third is equal to R e power one third times P r power one third. Okay. You use the relation that the Peclet number is equal to R e times P r, okay, which is equal to uh, V average d by nu, that is the Reynolds number and nu by alpha. Okay. So, therefore, this is just equal to V average d by alpha. Okay, the product of the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number. Okay. So, in this case it is written in terms of the Peclet number, okay. this, this is the relation that you get. Okay. So, in this case the Nusselt number does depend upon the Reynolds number and the Peclet number. It cannot be depend, uh, written as a function of the Peclet number alone because the flow pattern is changing for a turbulent flow as the Reynolds number changes. However, the dependence on Peclet number is still to the one third power. Okay. So, if you divide this Nusselt number by p power one third, what you would get is only a function of Reynolds number as predicted by the uh, Colburn analogy, the j factor that we had earlier. Okay. And similarly for the Sherwood number. Okay. So, these are the correlations for a laminar flow and a turbulent flow. Okay. How do we use this for an actual calculation? Okay, so, let us examine that. Okay. So, let us take an example, a heavy oil density rho is equal to 10 power 3 kg per meter cubed, okay. viscosity mu is equal to 0 0.1 kg per meter per second. This is about a hundred times the viscosity of water because viscosity of water is 10 power minus 3. Okay. Thermal conductivity K equals 0 0.15 watts per meter per degree centigrade. Okay. Watts is joules into second okay, power per meter per degree centigrade. Okay. So, uh, that is the thermal conductivity. Okay. Specific heat two into ten per three joules per kg per degree centigrade. Okay. Flows of diameter two centimeter and 
and length 4 meters. If the flow rate is 100 liters per hour and the temperature difference is 50 degrees centigrade, what is the heat transfer rate. Okay. So, that is the question, it is a design of a heat exchanger. Okay. You want to know that if I keep a certain temperature difference, have a certain length and diameter and a certain fluid flowing through, what will be the heat transfer rate to that material. Okay. Uh, this is of course, uh, typically you would work the other way that is you would say that I want to transfer a certain amount of heat, what should be the flow rate. Okay? But in this case, uh, uh, I am specifying the flow rate and the temperature. Okay? So, first thing I have to do is calculate the dimensionless numbers, the Peclet number, the Reynolds number, decide if the flow is laminar or turbulent and then apply the appropriate um, correlation. In this particular case, we do not know the average velocity yet, okay, which is required for the Reynolds and the Peclet number. So, what we will do is we will first calculate the average velocity. The flow rate is 100 liters per second. Okay. Hundred liters per second uh, per hour. I'm sorry, per hour. Okay. One liter is ten power minus three meter cubed. Okay. One liter is equal to ten power minus three meter cubed. Okay, which is equal to hundred into ten power minus three meter cubed. Okay within 1 hour which is 3600 second. Okay. 100 into 10 power minus 3 is 0 0.1 meter cubed, okay. 100 liters is 0 0.1 meter cubed in 3600 seconds. Okay. And if you do the calculation, this turns out to be equal to 2.78 into 10 power minus 5, okay, minus 2. Power minus 5 meter cube per second. Okay, that is the flow rate. Okay. The average velocity is equal to the flow rate 2.78 to 10 power minus 5 meter cube per second divided by the diameter pi d square by 4 pi d squared by 4 is a cross sectional area for a diameter d. Okay. So, this is equal to 2.78 into 10 power minus 5 meter cube per second, this should be in meter square. And if you put those two together, you will get 8.85 to 10 power minus 2 meters per second, okay. approximately 8.85 centimeters per second. Okay. That is the average velocity. Once we have this, we can calculate the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number. Okay. Re is equal to rho V average d by mu, rho is 10 power 3 kg per meter cube. V averages 8.85 into 10 power minus 2. meters per second into D is 0 0.02 meters. Okay, 2 centimeters is 0 0.02 meters. Okay. Divided by mu, which is the viscosity, by 10 power minus 1. 
kg per meter per second. Viscosity as you recall was 0.1 kg per meter per second. And if you do this calculation, you will get the answer as 17.70, okay, the answer is 17.70, less than 2100, so it is in the laminar regime. Okay. And the Prandtl number is equal to Cp mu by K, Cp is 2 into 10 power 3 joules per kg per degree centigrade into mu which is 0 0.1 kg per meter per second and divided by k which is 0 0.15 watts per meter per degree centigrade. Okay. And it is always a good idea to put in all of the dimensions as and when we are substituting because you can straight away verify that these groups are all dimensionless. Okay. Okay, you can see the degree centigrade will cancel out, the kg will cancel out. I have a joules per second in the numerator and the uh, uh, joules per meter per second in the numerator and the watt per meter in the denominator which are the same dimension. So, in this particular case the Prandtl number is equal to 1.33 into 10 power 3. Okay. What that implies is that the, uh, the, the momentum diffusion coefficient is in fact much larger than the thermal diffusion coefficient for this particular case okay, because the Prandtl number is large. Okay, and that is because the viscosity of this material is very high. Okay, so, momentum diffusion is very fast. Laminar flow, therefore, I can use the correlation. Nusselt number is equal to 1.86 R e power one third P r power one third into d by L power one third okay, into 17.7 power one third into 1.33 into d by L 0 0.02 meters length was 4 meters. Okay. Recall here that the diameter is 2 centimeter and the length is 4 meters. Okay. And this you will get as 9.12. Okay. This you will recall is equal to Q average by K delta T by D. Is equal to Q average by K delta T by D. Okay. The total heat transfer rate is going to be equal to Q average into pi D. L okay. Q average into pi d L. Okay. Pi into D is the perimeter of the pipe, L is the length, therefore pi d L is the surface cylindrical surface area across which heat transfer takes place. That is the area that is being multiplied by Q average. Okay. So this is equal to K delta T by D into the Nusselt number. Average Q average is equal to the Nusselt number multiplied by the denominator here, okay, multiplied by the denominator here. Okay. And you can see here that the factors of D will cancel out. When expressed in terms of the Nusselt number, the flow rate is independent of the diameter. Okay. So, this is going to be equal to, uh, sorry, I to, to pi d l. It is this D that will cancel out. And so, you will get in the end pi L K delta T times the Nusselt number, okay, which is pi into 4 meters into K is 0 0.15 
watts per meter per degree centigrade into delta T 50 degree centigrade is the temperature difference okay, into the Nusselt number which is 9.12 okay. and the final answer comes to 860 watts. So, this gives you a concrete example of how you can use these correlations to actually predict the heat transfer rate in the flow through a pipe. Okay. The correlations for low and high Reynolds numbers, uh, laminar flow and turbulent flow and how you can use those to predict the correlations. Okay. So, I will continue this, I will look at correlations for flow past a flat plate, flow around a particle and so on and we will solve some problems in each of those cases in the next lecture. So, I will continue this in the next lecture, I will see you then.